to see you. Good to meet you. I know that you had, um, you know, you come from uh, uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, and so you might have had some friends that, you know, might have said, what, what, are, you, what are you doing on, what are you going to the Glenn Beck program mm -hmm. for? Um, and you said, because Bill Moyer didn't invite me. That's right. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and here we are um, together, and I, I, would, I find it ironic that the people who might think that or say that would never think that you created this monster. Because when I first read this book, mm -hmm. um, I was a, an absolute wreck and, um, and uh, an alcoholic that was just trying to find some truth someplace. And this book empowered me. It was one of the first steps in empowering me as an individual. Can you explain what The Way of the Peaceful Warrior is? Start there. That's a good place to start. Um, what I mean by the term peaceful warrior is a, a life of balance. It's about recognizing each of us is a peaceful warrior in training in the sense that we are all seeking to live with a more peaceful heart. But there are times we all have to acknowledge we need a warrior's spirit. It's not necessarily about fighting except the inner battles we face in, in insecurity, self-doubt. But it's about standing up tall inside of ourselves, so to speak, and marching into life, taking responsibility for our lives, and doing what we can to help. Okay, so, uh, so um, how do we, um, as somebody who's watching today, mm -hmm. because I think there's a lot of people in our country that have either been told by someone else mm -hmm. or they tell themselves every day, I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I can't make it. Um, I'm not good enough. I'm not whatever. Where, where do you even start? Maybe I can provide a context for the, the answer to that question, where we start. It, we really start where, wherever we are. It begins on the ground, not up in the air. But I can provide a context by sharing just briefly how I evolved from a self-absorbed young athlete, as shown in the film, okay. um, to a self-absorbed author today. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do things like this when I was a young man. Yeah. How old are you now? Sixty. Uh, I just turned sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. And he's in and much better shape than I am. I used to do things like this. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. <laughs> Well, I did that this morning. <laughs> okay. but, but back then, um, well, now that I'm 68, they've moved my books from the New Age to the Middle Age section in, in the stores. So, but then I was focused on how to create talent for sports. Uh, I was a young athlete, a world champion gymnast, and then I coached at Stanford University, and I said, how can we create more talent to learn faster and easier and rise to higher levels in the sports field? And I was fairly successful at that, building that foundation of strength, flexibility, stamina, coordination, rhythm, timing, and so on. And my team at Stanford went from the bottom of the conference to one of the top three teams in the nation in about three and a half years. So I was fairly successful. I trained the top U.S. Olympian as well. Um, but I was noticing in my own life, being able to do handstands and cartwheels and somersaults did not help me much when I went out on a date. <laughs> you know, it didn't help me when I got married, when I had children, when I dealt with career decisions and financial issues, and the challenges we all face in everyday life, Glenn. So that's when I started asking bigger questions of my interest expanded out of the sports arena is how can we develop talent, not just for sports, but talent for living, for those challenges of everyday life. And that question many of us have had um, sent me around the world traveling and meeting various mentors, an intensive t at least 10 years, 10 to 15 years of training in various traditions, gaining perspective. And it led to that approach to living that I came to describe as a peaceful warrior's way. So some people will say, um, because I, 